Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon. I am Pablo, and for this episode, we're going to talk about... Well, I'm actually going to answer some questions in which, you know, we've kind of wondered about Pokemon in, like, in a logical standard, you know. But mostly just, like, unanswered questions of Pokemon logic. Like, an example would would be, like... How how would we like um like how would we like touch a fire Pokemon, you know, like a fire type? Like would its flame hurt us, you know, something like that? You know, those kinds of questions that we always question in a logical standard that the show or like any or the game that hasn't really answered us. You know. So actually like had to do a little bit of research, had to find some stuff which was really hard. Seriously, literally had to go to like, you know, like website to website. Well, yeah, some of the stuff I had to like find very hard. So let's get started on this. Okay, so for this video, I'll be answering four questions in which we always had trouble like wondering in Pokemon in base of logic, I guess. So I'll discuss how, well, what's it like inside a Pokeball, you know? I'm pretty sure a lot of us have wondered that. And I think Robot Chicken made a joke about that. The second one will, is do Pokemon eat each other? You know, since many of them are based on animals, like, is it possible that, you know, like a Gyarados eats a, like a fee bass or something. The third will be, can you touch your Pokemon's flame? You know, like your fire types, like I mentioned earlier in the beginning. And our final question will be, how would you use a TM or HM on a Pokemon? I've noticed some people have wondered that. Because in the game, it's like a little disc thing. Like, h how would you put it, like, like, would you put it in your Pokemon? Would you just, like, show it to them and they would, like, how would that work exactly? So let's get started. Huh, weird. So what's it like inside a Pokeball? I actually found the answer to this one in the new generation episodes of Unova. In which Yeah, Iris is drag in which it shows Iris is Dragonite in its Pokeball. You know, it was the episode where he was trying to teach an Ampharos how to use Thunder Punch. And so yeah, basically this is what it's like inside a Pokeball. Wow, that is, uh, it's kind of weird. You know, like, you've wondered all these years, what is it like inside a Pokemon? Like, do they like it there, or are they just, like, do they just fall asleep in their Pokemons? Is it, like, a coma where you just go in there, and you just, like, in a transitional state of sleepiness? You know, like an avatar? Like, the blue people avatar, you know? Where, in, where you go to the mop, and where you go into the body, your original body just stays asleep like that? I always thought it was something like that. But yeah, that, that's what it's like. It's actually more roomier than I expected too, seriously. I, I thought it would be very crowded, but no, it's actually... Looks more roomier than I expected. Like, n no offense, but it, I think this actually has more room than Timmy's fishbowl with Cosmo, Wanda, and Poof in it. Yeah, as you can see, I'm making a lot of references to television because I watched so much. Seriously, it, it's kind of sad. So yeah, that's why I started doing these videos to you know, keep me occupied for the summer. And so yeah, I guess Generation 5 episodes actually do help. We don't really like them, but it's nice to know how Ash is doing. Nice to know how Peach is doing as well. Wondering what happens next, you know, don't you ever get curious? And now we have this answer question. Let's move on. So, do Pokemon eat each other? That actually has been proven in the video game itself. You just have to look closely in the Pokedex. For example, Sneasel, an ice and dark type, it's when ones actually say that it hunts and, you know, like, it eats Pidgey eggs. 
which is kind of messed up. Like, yeah, seriously, that's just. I, I guess that's why it's ice and dark, since it's cold hearted, you know? Cold as an ice and like cold hearted, you know how dark it is? Man, that's just messed up. I never really understood things like, what's up with the feathers? Especially the one on its ear. Is that like its ear? Why do they have like a bigger ear or a feather? Like, like, what are you supposed to be exactly? Like, are you supposed to be a weasel? Because it sounds like Sneasel or something? Like, what are you? Yeah, sorry if you keep hearing some weird noises. Like I said, this is the quietest room I can find in my house. I apologize for any noises and future noises I uh, interrupt in making this episode. Or better videos. Another example is heat more. I think I'm saying it right. In which it's supposed to be like Sentry says that it literally just melts the, like, it just literally just melts the armor, the steel armor off Durant, the steel and bug type, and just slurps its insides. Which is also, like, I, I guess that makes it an anteater, I guess? So, yeah. I guess, you know... I guess maybe Pokemon actually does this just so we think that that way we think, oh, man, I guess Pokemon in the real world probably is a bad idea. You know, these guys eat each other, well, that's natural, but, you know, it's, uh, all of these guys would probably scare us a lot. I would love to have my own Pikachu. Hopefully it just doesn't eat me. I wonder if all Pokemon, like, eat meat. Like, are all the are all of them carnivores, omnivores, or vegetarians? I wonder. Because have you noticed that, like, Pikachu's always eating those little poffins or, like, little, like, dog food-looking Pokemon food, but have you noticed he has, like, little sharp teeth? So, does he have, like, a little, like, carnivorous side or something? Okay, let's move on to the next question. So, can you touch a Pokemon's flame? More simple, you know, in more simple layman's term, term, man, I cannot talk today. You know, can you basically touch the flame of your fire type? You know, can you touch your little Cyndaquil's mohawk, maybe like touch the tail of your Charmander? Yeah. Like a lot of people have always wondered this. What I've always wondered though, and not, not this, is that what I've always wondered about fire type Pokemon is if a Chimchar farts, does this flame get bigger? You know, like, out of all the questions of Pokemon logic when it comes to fire type Pokemon, people are always wondering, oh, yeah, can I, like, like touch the flame of my Charmander? Or, like, can I touch the, like, like the flame they have that Snuggle pops out? No, I, I never wondered that. I always wondered if Chimchar farts, will this flame go bigger? That's what I always wondered. Because that's how weird and random I am, I guess. But uh, for this question, we're going to focus more on the classic Can You Ride a Ponyta or Rapidash. You know, many people, when they think about it, they think of this. That as soon as you try to ride on one, you just burn yourself. Get roasted. I did not draw this, by the way. I don't know who the artist is, but I do appreciate his comedic comedic sense of humor or her I don't know who did this I would like to credit that person but I don't know who made this drawing I found it on Bing but yeah can you actually ride a ponytail or rapidash if they existed in the in the real world well actually that was answered in an episode which was kind of yes and no in which one of the first generation episodes in which Ash took place of this one girl who broke her arm in which she breeded her ponyta to be basically all speed just the perfect like racing horse or pony I guess in which in the episode Ash had some trouble like actually riding it as you can know it's back well, can, well its mane is the tail and it connects all the way to the head hair flame thing you know what I mean so yeah, it turns out that Supposedly, all fire types can control the temperature of their flame. You know, it still goes up, but they can control the temperature. You probably noticed that in some episodes how 
how uh, Cyndaquil can turn his on and off, or how Charmander made his bigger or smaller. Same with Chimchar's evolution and other Pokemon. So, yeah, maybe that's that's true. After all, like that whole walking on hot coals thing, like there's no secret. You just literally just walk on hot coals. That that that's the secret. There that there is no secret. You don't have to run. You don't have to like focus your mind on the on how there's no pain. No, literally you just walk on them because the coals, because all the heat is under the coals. On top is just low heat, so you can just walk at a slow enough pace, slow enough in which your foot just presses slightly and then you just keep walking so you don't feel that much pain. It feels a little hot, but yeah, you don't feel it. Unless you're running and then you press your foot down and yeah, it hurts. So I mean, it's the same thing. Like that little, um, if anyone's ever seen those little like fireball tricks in which someone's just rolling a fireball in their hand from one to the other, yeah, same thing. It's the material that like the fire's coming out at the top. The trick is to touch the bottom and the sides in which there's less in which the fire isn't going up. In which the fire's going up, not down. In which there the heat is lower. So maybe that's it. Or maybe Ash just got smart and put his butt up while he was writing it. A little joke there. As you can see his butt is up on top of the flame. Yeah. Ah, looking back at the old episodes. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, so for our final question, we got... How would you use a TM or HM on a Pokemon? Because a lot of people have wondered that. A lot of people... Like, some people think, Oh, well... I guess it would be easy for Porygon because the TM or HM would be like a disc and you just insert it into the computer. Or maybe every Pokemon is just a robot. And people have always wondered how would it work exactly, would they eat it? Like would you have to shove it up its butt, some people say as a joke, which is... That's just cruel, man, that's just nasty, that's just wrong, why would you ever think about that? It's a kid's show, people. And a really cool video game. Cannot wait for X and Y to come out. But yeah, I actually had to find... Well, I actually did some research. Well, I didn't really do some research, I just kind of remembered something in which the answer basically is in the Pokemon manga I may like discuss about it a little bit more in a different video of the manga since a lot of people don't know its existence but yeah this manga of Pokemon is called The Electric Tale of Pikachu in which is a manga that basically just reflects upon the show of the anime not the video games as some of the modern ones of today if some people don't even know of it, if some people even know of its existence, I should have a, a copy of the black and white one that my friend gave me. So anyway, yeah, it took me forever, seriously, like this stuff is rare to find. Seriously, go on Amazon, you might be able to find, like, like you'll be able to find some, like the books, but if you try to get the, like, a... The last copies of it, that's going to cost you some dough. That's going to cost a lot of moolah, pounds, dinero, you know, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So, anyway, continuing on. Uh, yeah, I was, like, I read some of it. Well, not because I had the books, but because I, you know, read some of them, on like, for free online. In which one of the stories was basically just a reflection of one of the episodes. Not all of them are based on episodes. Some are I think, I think some aren't based on the episodes, I'm not sure, you know, it's been a long time, but I remember that there was one that was based on the Eevee Kid episode, you know, in which there was a kid with an Eevee, and he wanted his Eevee to stay the same, he didn't want to evolve it, but his, he had three brothers in which they had Eevee evolutions, they're like, no, 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 you had to evolve it, we drew this entire, like, Pokemon evolution party, in which we're giving away stones to people to evolve their Pokemon, you have to evolve yours too. Uh, apparently they're rich. And so they had, they had one in the manga too. Except the manga turned out to be a little bit different. It was some sort of weird secret society school thing. I don't remember it very much. In which Ash was making a big speech how Pokemon don't really have... Like you can't force evolution on a Pokemon. If they want to evolve, they'll evolve. You know, they've actually had some episodes like that. Like in Sinnoh, 
Piplo, who evolves through leveling up and training, was going to evolve, but was trying to force not itself not to. Luckily, Nurse Joy gave Dawn a Neverstone to give to Piplo. You know, um, we've had some episodes, or two I think, in which Ash and Pikachu were, like, they were given the offer. I think there's some episodes in which Ash and Pikachu were, gave, were given the offer, or they were trying to be convinced to evolve Pikachu into Raichu. So, yeah. And there's this whole episode, it's also in the video game of Harkle and Soul Silver. In which they, in which Team Rocket forced the Magic Carp to evolve into Gyarados, and for some reason it's red. So, yeah, forceful evolution. Ash did not believe in that, and basically they're just forcing the kid to force his Eevee in the manga. So, Ash said, "Okay, what if we battle like your three brother? Like, what if we battle the three brothers? Like the one that have, which have a Vaporeon, a Jolteon, and a Flareon." Then will you accept that Pokemon evolution is an option, that it's a choice, that Pokemon don't have to evolve to be strong? Which actually does make sense. Like, look at Scyther and Scizor. Scyther was introduced in the first generations and is one of the most powerful unevolved Pokemon. So, yeah, just a count. Like, there, there's something that goes along with Ash's evidence. Then again, Scissor wasn't introduced. And you know what? Okay, let's back on topic. And so, yeah, they defeated the first two brothers. One was because Pikachu had a type advantage. The second one was because, well, Pikachu was awesome and he did all the work. The third one, though, he had to battle Pikachu out of battle. Well, Pikachu and the Eevee kid out of battle Jolteon. It was basically just a double battle thing. I think. Or, yeah, the first two were double, double battles. And then the last one, it was just a one-on-one -on -one between Jolteon and Eevee. In which Eevee could not beat Jolteon. He could not at first because he was just not fast enough compared to Jolteon's evolved speed. But then Ash called for a timeout, and then he decided that. And then they like did some little bit of research quickly in the Pokédex, and they found out a move they could learn that they had the TM for. And here it is. So, you know, he asked for time. I, like, you probably can't even see this, but, uh, see this little, like, cube thing? Yeah, that's the TM. Like, there's little, there's even, like, something right now. It says, uh, technical machine, a device that allows Pokemon to learn an attack it would never learn by attaining leveling, I guess, at and that's what it says. All right, it's like really small handwriting. I, well, it's not really small handwriting, but yeah, I had to take a. I, I could not find this online, so I had to take a picture of it. So yeah. And oh my god, I don't, I don't remember the, the website in which I got it from. I wish I remembered it. Sorry, folks. I'll, I might. Like, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below if I can find it. And so. Yeah, basically, if you notice here, he basically opens the TM, and it's just sprinkled all over Eevee on its head. So, yeah, that's how it learned. So that's how a TM would be used on a Pokemon, since they never truly introduced it on the show. Like, they introduced the HMs. Actually, they, they only introduced one HM. No, actually two of them, which was Cut and Surf. Those were the only ones that have been introduced on the show, but they were, but they've already been learned by the Pokemon. They didn't like show an HM. It just showed the attack. So the man, so I have to go all the way to the manga so we can finally know how it would look like for it to actually be used. So finally found the evidence because I coincidentally remember this which is weird because I have such a terrible memory <laughs> it's kind of funny so yeah okay so there you have it folks I basically just answered four questions in which we have always kind of wondered when it comes to Pokemon logic so we finally realized that a TM and HM we just 
open a little box and it'll sprinkle all over your Pokemon, you know. Like, <laughs> it's kind of funny. When I was at, like, Tinkerbell from Peter Pan, I was just, like, all the dust everywhere and, like, the kids would be able to fly, so. That's how a Pokemon would learn attacks from TMs or HMs. We can pet our little fire Pokemon, fire types, as long as they can, as long as they actually, like, care for us and will lower the temperature of their flame. So, yeah, good to know if they actually exist. So, yeah, this, this would actually be, you know, you know, I guess we can stop wondering now when it comes to this. There's still a whole bunch of other questions in which aren't unanswered, like, how come Scyther cannot learn fly? A bug type with wings. And it's part flying. Yet, Golurk, which is basically just a living statue, can fly. Like, I've seen it fly on the show and in the movie, but... Why can't Scissor learn it? Or Scyther? What is up with that? Like... Why? How come you, you won't let any bug type except for, I think, Genesect and Volcanera? Or Volcarona, or whatever you pronounce that name. It looks ugly anyway. But yeah, why why wouldn't you let them learn fly? Like the other Pokemon, that, that that would be so awesome and useful. I always want to like hop on my hair across and fly away. Yeah, because it has wings too. And it learns Aerial Lace. Like, but why not? Like, that's just so messed up. Like, will you add that for X and Y? Because that would be kind of cool, even though you're probably not going to. But, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. And you're welcome for answering some of the questions you've always wondered when it comes to logic and Pokemon. So, yeah, thanks for watching again. You know, click like, subscribe, leave something in the comments for any ideas you have or any questions you've always wondered. I might try to answer them. If you have any ideas for what I should, like, do for future videos, yeah, leave, leave, leave them in the comments. Sorry, I'm starting. I cannot talk today. What's up with that? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.